Airbnb yet? Have you tried it? Um, do you know what it is? It's a home sharing app that matches vacationers with folks who want to rent out a home or just a room for a couple of days or a couple of weeks. Hello, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Espinosa. That and I'm Rick Reef. Airbnb and other short-term rental apps are wildly popular, yeah. but they're not universally loved. Many homeowners complain that properties are being used as year-round party houses and ruining their neighborhoods and cities are cracking down. Well, you know, when that happens, our David Nazar is all over the story, so he joins us with much more on this situation here in the Southland. And as you know, this is and Rick, I was in the city of Santa Monica, has about 90,000 residents, and officials there are very concerned about the quality of life for their neighbors, specifically being able to combat that terrible housing shortage we have in LA County and provide affordable housing for all people of all walks of life. However, they say companies like Airbnb, well, they're jeopardizing their community. Santa Monica, California. It's one of the most picturesque Southern California cities, famous for its beach, pier, and arcade, as well as the Third Street Promenade, thousands of daily tourists, and oh yes, rent control, where there's a limit on how much landlords can raise the rent. For decades, Santa Monica city officials have made affordable housing a priority allowing the average working person a chance to live near the ocean, where in any other coastal community, it costs a fortune. One of the ways Santa Monica is now doing this is by not allowing apartment owners and homeowners to transform their properties into nightly vacation rentals. Airbnb, VRBO, and Booking.com are just some examples. These online companies provide a way for vacationers to travel inexpensively and not pay for a pricey hotel, and subsequently for property owners to rent out their extra space. As vacation rentals began to be part of the economy, we were a very heavily impacted area. And when I became mayor, I got a report that a large number, maybe as many as 1,700 Santa Monica apartments had been converted to de facto hotel rooms. When did you get that report? When was this? That was in January or February of last year. It was disruptive to housing in Santa Monica. Why is it disruptive when apartment owners will argue that, look, we have property rights. This is our land. This is our building. We should be able to do with it what we want to do with it. They have property rights, certainly, but they also have responsibilities to the community, and an apartment building is meant for long-term residences. We, as a community, want to have families here. We want to have people who are committed to the neighborhood, and what the short-term rentals were doing was bringing in people who were here to party, and that's not fair to the neighbors, and it's not good for the buildings and the building's owners, really, in the long term. So are you citing apartment owners? Are you finding apartment owners? What exactly is going on here? We're doing it all. We're investigating, we're enforcing, we're citing, we're fining, we're taking people to court, and we're winning. Many apartment owners are angry at the new rules and regulations that the city of Santa Monica is putting in place. The Apartment Owners Association of California is located out here in the San Fernando Valley, and it represents thousands of apartment owners, many in Santa Monica. We had a chance to speak with the president and founder of the AOA, an organization he formed back in 1982. The housing providers in Santa Monica are the solution. They provide housing. The city council is the problem. They pass laws to try to stop apartment owners and get in their way of providing the housing. They don't provide housing. Why are they trying to tell the housing providers how to do it? Fowler says he and other apartment owners do not appreciate the police state attitude of Santa Monica city officials and how they're enforcing the new laws. These city laws include fining property owners $500 for the advertising and operating of short-term vacation rentals. Also, requiring apartment owners apply for a special business license to operate legal home shares, which is when the owner lives on the property and the guest stays no more than 30 days and the fact that property owners are paying the same 14% tax that the hotels do. Fowler says he has a message for the Santa Monica City Council. Get out of the housing business. They're in the housing business. They don't know anything about housing. They've never provided housing for anybody. They individually themselves, they spend all their money on themselves and uh, get out of the business. The division we made was that it's now okay in Santa Monica to share your dwelling unit and to advertise that and make money off of it. Uh, what's not okay is to convert what should be a residence into a vacation rental where nobody lives, where the neighborhood becomes a ghost of its former self. You know, many cities have acted because they wanted to gather the revenue or whatever. That wasn't the issue for us. The main issue for us was housing and making sure that the housing stock we have for residences remained residences. They 
feel like policemen and they're policing uh, the housing providers in Santa Monica. And how, where is it going? More and more. The more money they can get, the more they're going to get, the more power they have, the more it will empower them to get reelected. And it's all, follow the money, follow the money. Now, it really should be noted, one of the reasons this is such a vital issue for the city of Santa Monica is that 70% of the people living there are renters. So, of course, with the tremendous housing shortage, if, look, many of these apartments eventually become short-term vacation rentals, Elizabeth and Rick, I mean, where are folks going to live? Right, and also the taxes and schools, and there's so much, there's so much to just, you know, that space but you well, know no, wait a second though let, let me ask david uh santa monica has rent control correct yeah, just I mean, like san francisco and so if you're a landlord all right and, and this is a case where it seems like santa monica's trying to do all this stuff so they pass laws that makes it more difficult for landlords mm -hmm. so if you're a landlord suddenly why would you want to have a rent controlled unit you bring somebody in and you're never going to be able to raise their rent so yeah, sure, Airbnb. I mean, what mm -hmm. landlord really wants to keep moving people in, mm -hmm. in and out of a place if he could have a long-term person there? Well, somebody who's under rent control, for one. Now, I realize there's other issues involved in this, but I do think that the heavy regulation uh, contributes more to the problem than the help. And I kind of agree with the apartment guy there. Yeah, I mean, as you know, uh, Santa Monica uh, put into effect rent control in the late uh, 70s. They were one of the first cities in California to really watch out for underserved folks, give them housing. But in answer to your question, apartment owners are saying, look, we're not here to be in the short-term vacation rental business. If they're going to buy a 20, 30, 40 unit building, they're there to have long-term rentals and to uh, have a business out of it. They're not, they're not looking for a quick buck, obviously. Yeah, that would be the objective. Well, you know, Santa Monica, though, as you both know, is not the only city. Okay, we've been talking about this for a long time. We talk about it on the radio and here as well, right? Um, right. In Anaheim, which is home to Disneyland, I mean, here are some of the homes available. Yep. Take a look on Airbnb. Some are within walking distance of Disneyland. Well, you can see that they advertise they can sleep more than nine people. They have kitchens. Some even show Mickey Mouse. Anaheim is one of the local cities that is banning this. Landlords that buy homes only to use them as hotels in neighborhoods. So one investor, get this, in Utah actually bought 35, yeah, 35 single-family homes, converted them to hold bunk beds in each bedroom, and he made basically mini motels out of these places. Uh, other websites where you can find homeowners who are renting or just an extra bedroom in their home are called VRBO, uh, Booking.com, and Roomarama. All right, and joining us now is Bryce Fujii. Bryce lives in Canoga Park. He rents out his extra bedroom. He started using Airbnb because he lost his job. He needed some money so he wouldn't lose his home. Makes sense. And also with us, uh, Janine Robbins. Janine lives in Anaheim and is concerned about out-of-town real estate investors who have converted many single-family homes into mini motels, much like we just saw a second ago. Yes. Thank you so welcome. much and welcome. welcome. Thank you very welcome. much. Thank and you I, I think we're going to learn in this discussion, mm -hmm. there are many strands to this, yeah. and each community has a little different issue. Certainly Anaheim's, uh, you know, a little different than Los Angeles and, right. and so forth. Different communities. Yeah. But, you know, so also understanding what Airbnb is, right, or the concept of the sharing economy. Yes. Uh, we're talking about short-term rentals. We're talking about long-term rentals. We're also talking about some of you who are hosts, they're called hosts, uh, who are living in the home when you actually rent it out to other folks. Is that what you do? Exactly. Um, I actually am renting out a bedroom and common rooms within my personally owned ha home that I occupy. So I'm actually there while guests are there for the most part. And if there's any problems that arise, I can take care of it immediately. So now the folks that are using you, what typically, uh, how long are they there and why are they, why are they coming uh uh, to your to your place it really ranges there's everything from just a one night stay for a business person or someone coming in for a conference to longer night stays with traveling nurses uh, to uh, I had actually a couple from uh, India that came to have some burn surgery and they needed a longer uh, kind of a hospice type style care right. and so they came and stayed with right. me for uh, about four months so I have to ask I'm really curious what if somebody comes and they just trash the place <laughs> you know I mean do you have any recourse uh, it's never happened to me, um, but you actually set up a safety deposit fund that when the person comes in, they put extra money aside that would help 
pay for that. And then if they really trashed your place, you can file a grievance with the platform and they have insurance that would help cover for those. Students. You know, I've stayed, I know you've never stayed in Airbnb. Yeah. I actually have, I have a friend who yeah. lost her job, unfortunately was laid off. And so this became a source of, of you know, income. And so I understand, though, also as our homeowner, Janine, yes. that I wouldn't want to see all these strangers all of a sudden coming through my neighborhood, and there's no parking, and, and who are you? Uh, so that's scary, but in your situation, this is to a different level. It is to a different level. 98% um, of the homes that are listed on Airbnb or VRBO in Anaheim are not home sharing such as Bryce's situation. So that's a different situation. That's a different situation. What they are is property investors who've swooped into Anaheim, bought up these homes, torn down the original footprint of the house, a three, four bedroom ranch style house, built seven, eight, nine, ten bedroom mega mansions. So uh, let's just say a house that can technically sleep 15 people, which is very little on the spectrum here. 15 people occupied 60% of the time brings approximately 3,500 strangers into your neighborhood each year. Mm. That's just one house. In our neighborhood of 60 homes, we have 12. 12 SDR, short-term rentals. Wow. How has that impacted the... Uh, the oh, the, the quality of life is gone. These people are on vacation. When you live in your home, you're, you're there. You, you work. You get up to go to work. Your kids get up to go to school. Um, these people are on vacation. They're there for conventions. They become party houses. There's no consideration for the neighborhood. The entire quality of life is gone for the neighborhood. And by removing so many permanent residents from the neighborhoods, you're not only impacting schools, like you mentioned earlier, you're impacting voting districts, you're impacting census tracts. All it is, it becomes like a paper town. Right. A paper town with no permanent residents. We not know the mayor, though, has addressed it, right? Yes. In fact, we do have yeah. a, of an email with some points here. Yeah. Um, Anaheim Mayor is Tom Tate, and uh, he says that they fully support, of course, the concept of renting out a room when the homeowner is there, yes. like what mm -hmm. you do, Bryce, uh, on a lim but, or on a limited basis, we should say, uh, when the owner rents out their home when they're on vacation. Uh, this, he says, is not the problem in Anaheim, yeah. as you mentioned, Janine. And so because of that, um, you know, Anaheim is over, what, 50,000 visitors per day. That's year-round, mm -hmm. 365 days per year. Now, the city created the resort district, they say, through special hotel zoning to accommodate this. And so the vast majority of the short-term rentals in Anaheim are houses that were purchased and renovated, right. they say, exclusively to rent out vacationers 365 days a year right. with no homeowner present. Yeah, and the other point that Mayor Tate makes is that he, he understands, he says even right. in some places like Phoenix where there's an issue, yeah. it's spring training. Right. So for a month or two or three, Families you've got that, and then, then life gets back to normal. Whereas in Anaheim, like where you live, you're n next to the resort district. We, we're actually, so you've got a Super Bowl year-round. Yes, we're actually in the resort district, technically. Um, they've made it so that the resort district will not allow residences yet the resort district has moved into our residential areas. Mm -hmm. So there's also a big issue of safety. Safety is a giant concern. Our next door neighbor has two children. Um, the house behind them, so Caddy Corner behind us, is a short-term rental. There was a volleyball team staying there from Australia. He caught them leaning over the fence talking to his 10-year-old son. Now, very uncomfortable situation. Right. You don't want your child, who you think is safe in their own backyard, right. talking to strangers. They can't play out in the front. Now they can't play well, out in the back. Of course, I'm the volleyball team. That'd be kind of cool. They could get think, their autographs or something. But you don't know. You know. You don't know the safety yeah. issue. You don't know who's next to you. I mean, you can go on Megan's Law and look and see the permanent residents, you know, who are listed there. You can't see that for the visitors that are there. These are people. These are transient people. They're, they come in. And then they're gone. Well, let me ask but you because we don't gone. have yeah. we don't have the uh, uh, we don't have these uh, multi-unit uh, uh, hosts uh, yes. or owners here to to we don't talk have space to. Yeah, right. So we, we and uh, but we didn't have you know they're not here to defend themselves. Right. But one of the arguments they have made is that they will go in and actually upgrade these units that they will take right. places that have you know been abandoned or whatever well, and they is. build them up. Uh, was that the case in your neighborhood? I mean, were these like a lot of vacant units no. that they bought? No. There were no vacant units. What they did was they went door to door, offering full cash, close in two weeks, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars over the appraised value. Over the appraised yes. value. Wow. Yes. And so, as far as um, upgrading the neighborhood, what they do is they take the homes, so they shrink down the kitchen. They want as many bedrooms as possible. Mm -hmm. You have bedrooms where the kitchen was. You have bedrooms in the hallway. Yeah. You have bedrooms, you have beds and closets. Mm -hmm. 
So they're looking to sleep as many people as possible. That can't sound, yeah. it doesn't sound more comfortable than a hotel. I mean, like I said, I stay in Airbnb. Might be cheaper, though. Uh, might be well, less it, expensive, and that's, and that's, that's one of the part of, it, part right? of the, uh, right. the right. That's part of it. But also, it's the kitchen. And I know, like, yeah. for me and a lot of folks, mm -hmm. um, especially, like, you talk about your burn uh, patient, mm -hmm. uh, tourists, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you want access to your kitchen, you cook, that you're saving money in that as well. Yeah. But you're a host that lives there, so you're also an incredible and valuable resource to say, oh no, don't go at this hour, don't take the 405 yeah. at 3, take it at X, Y, and Z. Exactly. And that's really what the benefit of the Airbnb experience is, is that you have that personal one-to-one -one communication. Rather than going to a concierge at a hotel desk and trying to stand in line and get those personal recommendations, the people that come to stay with me get a very personal recommendation. I can tell them traffic issues to avoid or specific restaurants to attend. So it's really good for the economy around where I live. The small mom and pops, they're getting business that they would not have regularly. Yeah, I mean, people, I, think, right. I yeah. mean Airbnb is everywhere. It's worldwide, by the way. I, I mean, I'm going to Europe uh, soon, and I know that you know that's that was part of our conversation right. if we were to stay in Airbnb. We'll say. Uh, yeah, but, and, uh, but I don't, I agree. As a homeowner, I do believe that it's my home. So I should be able to do what I want with my home. And also as a homeowner, I don't want to see this the 405 in front of my house and with people that I don't know that are strangers. I mean, you so, lose that. There's got to be a midway point. So I know the city of Anaheim has addressed the issue with these investors in yes. your situation, Janine. Yes. Uh, right. So I know in, in Los Angeles proper, there's that discussion. It's ongoing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, it's 30 days, right? You can't stay beyond? No, there's an ordinance in place right now that's uh, before the city council. We're going for a vote in the next couple months. And they're looking at limiting, uh, for those people who are staying less than 30 days, they're looking at putting a date cap for how many days a year that someone could rent their house out to that. I personally oppose that. Mm -hmm. I think if you are an owner-occupied property, you should be able to rent 365 days a year, as long as you're there to monitor uh, the mm -hmm. behavior of the you're guests. You're a good neighbor. So you're there. Exactly. So, so this will impact you? Will this, this will impact awesome. me. That ordinance right now will impact me. Uh, right now, as it currently reads in its tentative state, they would be limiting SDRs to 180 days in an owner-occupied uh, home and, and right now you do how much how many days on right you? now I would say I do around three-fourths of the year about 270 days or so. okay so this would cut you down now now <laughs> this is interesting because you're you both have you're coming at this from from very different mm -hmm. perspectives uh, do you do you do you see his point do you think as an owner occupied would, would you be fine if he did a 240 days yes I have no problem with an owner occupied short-term rental where the owner is present in the house while the people are staying there what I have a problem with is the owners who live in Utah, the owners who live in Arizona, the owners who live in China. They're not neighbors. Of which there's a yeah. lot They're of not them. neighbors. No, there's, right. not, there's no neighbors. Yeah. Those people come, they never check in their tenants. They don't know who's checking in, how many are checking in. They don't even know if it's the people who signed the contract. And, and Bryce, as an owner-occupier, uh, Owner occupied host. <laughs> yeah. uh, do you uh, do you see I certainly see, situation? I see it in certain situation. Yes, um, I, and one of the things that's it, with the uh, the LA ordinance that they're looking at is it would completely exclude that type of operation. And you yeah. have to actually, uh, Bryce. There is a business license, right? There's not a business license. What the ordinance now is requiring would be a registration. Okay, so and it really varies because Santa Monica, it, I know there is a business license correct. you must have. There's a forty percent tax. So, uh, so you know, every area is yeah. different. But I also know this from my my friends and people who I know that are hosts that run Airbnbs, it also changes your quality of life. How does it change, how did it change yours? It certainly improved it from, from, my, uh, from my part. I have been world travel, traveled, I've gone around the world and seen many different places and traveled most of the states in the United States. But on this level where you get to meet people from around the world, I have Saudi Arabians and Swedish people and Afghanis, and they're right there next to you and they're eating dinner with you and they're sharing their life experiences. It really makes everyone much more human. Instead of being us versus them, it's suddenly we're all a global community. It's a real yeah. cultural exchange. Very I mean, and, so, and yeah. I, I've always said though, when you do travel, I love hotels. Don't get me wrong, because you got the gym, the pool, and all the fun stuff, yeah. right? Room service. <laughs> but uh, when you stay at someone's home, you are immersed. You are in that culture. You are in that country. Yeah. You are in that city. Well, and and the numbers speak for themselves of how popular these are. I mean, we are we are uh, we there are serious problems, and we're talking about right. those problems tonight. But mm -hmm. but clearly, this sharing economy is not going to be stopped, whether it's Uber or whatever else. And you know, two of thirds, uh, according to Airbnb, these are their numbers. But I, I would uh, they don't sound outrageous to me. Two thirds of Americans and three fourths okay. of millennials have a favorable impression of their 
the share and economy and something like 84 percent of people who are familiar with Airbnb like it and they and they are they approve uh, it's interesting to hear that there are some homeowners that don't want to see these str short-term rentals at all what do you how do you react to that both of you and i know janine you're on it by the way have you ever used this. airbnb i'm curious um yes actually we did use airbnb <laughs> up in cambria we did but it was a multi-use area it was an area that was zoned for multi-use uh -huh. there was hotels uh -huh. there was restaurants and then there was private residences all in the same stretch did you like it um yes yes i did but in our area they're zoned r1 they're residential areas right. they're not zoned for businesses and as far as property rights go we the city would not allow us to open up a mechanics garage mm -hmm. out of our house they would not allow us to open up a bakery out of our house um so to allow somebody to operate a hotel out of their house is not acceptable it's, mm -hmm. it's not compatible with the residents the the nature of the people staying in these short-term rentals it, it's not compatible at all. Right. And we do want to know that Anaheim, the city of Anaheim, has taken care of the situation yes. for you. No, yes. Not, not to the satisfaction of, the, uh, no, no, of, of those they, property owners, no, but, but certainly, but yes. They, 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 yeah. There's yeah. A, a hardship exclusion, right. like yes. they'll give you 18 months or something. Well, we, led a, we, led a, we formed a coalition, basically, of everybody who was affected by this. And um, through many, many months of fighting with, about this issue, um, the city council voted to ban all future short-term rentals and all existing short-term rentals, but they'll give them an 18-month phase-out period. Exactly. So we'll, which will get them to, through two summers. By the way, uh, I, I have heard you were a very mm -hmm. effective advocate. <laughs> now, is this the first time you've done this sort of thing, or do you have some experience in politics? Or um, No experience in politics, but experience in um, political venues, such as the Orange County Fair Board type thing. So, um, but this hits so near and dear to my heart. I mean, this is our quality of life. This is our neighborhood. When the neighborhood doesn't become a neighborhood anymore, what do you do? You stand right. up for the people who are still there. Which is important, right. I will say, though, what's interesting, there is a site out there that uh, millennials, it's a little bit for the younger crowd, they do the couch surfing. They yeah. actually rent out couches. I yes. think that's just wild. So, Bryce, uh, what would you want city council to do and to consider when they look at this exclusion? Well, I, I think the most important thing is to separate the good apples from the bad apples. Yes. And people like myself that are owner-occupied homes, I really don't see we need much more restrictions other than a registration so that they can make sure they're getting their 14 percent tax. Um, I don't need date limitations on it because I'm there and I can gauge the behavior of, of the residents. Right. It, just uh, probably not surprising, uh, we were unable to get a, an official Airbnb spokesman on because because those folks are all guess where they are this week they're in Philadelphia at the Democratic Convention <laughs> as they were in Cleveland so you know big time politics has uh, it has arrived as on, on this issue sure has and that's all the time we have for now but thank you so much as always for being here with yes us. thanks great guests thanks again to Bryce Fujii and Janine Robbins thank you've you. heard from us and now we'd love to hear from you so please go to the studio SoCal page on Facebook be sure to like us Share any comments or questions. I'm sure you have a lot to say on this topic. Or if you prefer, tweet us about tonight's show at the Studio SoCal Twitter page. We always enjoy hearing from you. We certainly do. We also invite you to watch the show online as well as previous episodes of the series by going to pbssocal.org. Click on Studio SoCal. And on behalf of the entire team, thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time. Right here on Studio SoCal.